And in sports, Barbados booted out of the FIFA World Cup qualifiers. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. And a very good afternoon to you. I'm Lisa Lloyd with the CBC Evening News. Prime Minister Frendel Stewart says health must be placed high on the local and regional agenda. Mr. Stewart, who is also the incoming chairman of CARICOM, says the impact of non-communicable diseases is of serious concern. He says it has implications for the future development of the entire region. Mr. Stewart says efforts must be made to reverse the dangerous trends. Take my assurance as Prime Minister that we will continue to promote healthy lifestyles not only here in Barbados, but over the next six months when I am chairman of CARICOM, we will be accentuating the need for all of our CARICOM states to place some heavy emphasis on instilling in our people the need to have healthy minds and healthy bodies. That is where the future of this region is going to be rendered secure. The Prime Minister was speaking during the presentation ceremony for the 11th CARICOM 10K race held yesterday ahead of the 36th regular meeting of the CARICOM Heads of Government, which starts here in Barbados on Thursday. He says such events speak volumes about the regional body's commitment to promoting health and active lifestyles. The theme, of course, of the road race is that the health of a nation is the wealth of a nation. And that is as appropriate as it can be because... At the level of CARICOM, we have all been very concerned with the incidence of chronic non-communicable diseases uh, amongst our people. Here in Barbados, of course, I've had occasion to say that it is important that we encourage our young people to understand that a healthy mind and a healthy body is what the future of Barbados needs. And we'll have details about the race in the sports news. Well, the days of acute shortages of drugs at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital may soon be over or at least reduced significantly. This, as the hospital's chief executive officer says, they've been able to cut down some of the debt owed to pharmaceutical companies. Lisa Broom tells us more. The QEH's operations in some cases were almost crippled because of its inability to pay suppliers. Some pharmaceutical companies were either threatening to or withholding drugs from the hospital. This prompted the Barbados Association of Medical Practitioners to make urgent calls for the problem to be solved. Now, Chief Executive Officer Dr. Dexter James is reporting that the hospital has been able to make some payments and start to repair what he has described as a broken, fractured relationship with major suppliers. We've made some substantial payments to... Uh, a few of the largest suppliers, but we heartened by the pronouncements in the in the in the recent uh, budget, by uh, approved by Parliament, where extra budgetary funds are to come through a number of mechanisms for dealing with the hardcore creditors. Dr. James adds that smaller suppliers have also found some relief. Many of our smaller suppliers have availed themselves of the trade receivable liquidity financing facility offered to small businesses um, through uh, the central bank and the various uh, bank financing institutions that are part of the arrangement. And this has worked very, very well for us, exceedingly well for us indeed, uh, because it has allowed a lot of smaller suppliers to be able to keep their, um, keep their, their, their business afloat while at the same time improving the cash flows as well as the ability to provide uh, supplies to the, to the hospital. He says the stocking situation has improved significantly over the last seven to eight months with the implementation of some strict control practices. These tools are intelligent systems that allows uh, departments to identify minimum stock, uh, stocking levels and to also advise them on reorder points. Long, uh, much earlier, rather than wait until the stocks run to zero and then a crisis situation develops.
The CEO adds the facility will continue to work on its supply chain as the money becomes available. Lisa Broom, CBC News. Well, for the first time, two monarchs will be crowned at this year's Piccadilly Crop Finals. Apart from the winner of the Piccadilly Crop competition, the winner of the inaugural BT Crop Over Superstar comp competition will collect their $15,000 cash prize, free house and car insurance. Barbados Today is the company behind the social media Calypso competition, and its CEO, Kmar Jordan, says this is the company's response to calls made by the culture minister for businesses to get involved in the festival. Ms. Jordan says, the competition is open to Barbadians in the country or the diaspora who are 18 years or older. She adds entrants are required to submit a two-minute video on the company's website and voting will be done online. The response has been very favorable. We've been getting a lot of calls into the office. Um, people are very excited and this is both locally and internationally. Um, and we expect that by the end of this week, we'll have at least 100 entrants in terms of solid videos. So those are coming in. Right now, if you're on the platform, you won't be able to see those videos. But by the 5th of July, that's when the process of submitting videos comes to an end. So you have seven days left, right, right Andrew? Today is seven days from now in terms of getting your material in. And Culture Minister Stephen Lashley praised the organizers for their creativity in conceptualizing the competition. I think this particular competition also provides an avenue for our Calypsonians, those who are to date undiscovered, those who perhaps are a bit shy to come on the stage and who can in the bedroom or the bathroom. I know there are many bathroom singers uh, who would compete among and between themselves at home. Now you have the opportunity of coming out of the, uh, the proverbial closet, so to speak, and to bring your talents to the fore. Well, Barbados can expect economic growth if it signs on to an agreement with secure energy supplier Petra Kareeb. This is the belief of the president of the Clement Payne movement, David Kamashong. He was speaking at the 10th anniversary of Petro Kareeb for those CARICOM member states who have signed on. The celebration was held at the Venezuelan embassy. Mr. Kamashong says Petro Kareeb will be able to assist the country's growth through many of its projects. Barbados becoming a, a part of Petro Kareeb would not mean that Barbados has to break any ties with Trinidad and, and, and Tobago uh, or have to dislocate its relationship with Trinidad and Tobago. None of these are insuperable obstacles. These are things that can be, that, um, can be discussed at a negotiating table and worked out in an amicable manner. Meantime, Venezuela's ambassador to Barbados, Jose Gomez, says if Barbados signs on to Petro Caribe, transporting fuel between the islands will improve. So we want to solve that problem and to create a cheap company that belong to the countries here in the area, in the Petro Caribe zone, that will facilitate the transportation. And the same with, air, with the air transportation, the con air connectivity. Governor General Sir Elliot Belgrave wants primary school teachers and students to know they still matter. He was speaking during a visit to the Eagle Hall Primary School only days after visiting the Deacons Primary School. Sir Elliot also told the students wealth does not have to play a role in becoming successful, they just need to work hard. I want the students to realize that notwithstanding the fact that their parents may not be wealthy, wealthy that they should strive to make something of themselves. I want them to know that in order to make something of themselves, they must learn to respect themselves. They must respect their parents and obey them. They should also respect their teachers and obey them. And they should learn to love their school and their country. Well, the mood was a sad one over at the small Welch's Primary in St. Thomas this morning. It was the first day of school since Friday's tragic road death of 11-year-old Abijah Holder. A school in mourning. So much so that no one is willing to talk to the media. Principal Patricia Lovell telling CBC it's just too hard at this time. Black ribbons tied to any available space help to paint the picture. Inside the hall, everyone gathers for a special assembly conducted by Reverend Dr. Michael Clark of the St. Thomas Parish Church. 
He tells the children that in the midst of their despair, sadness and pain, God is a constant presence in their lives and that instead of asking why the tragedy occurred, they should ask for the strength to get through this and any other challenge they may have to face. The principal says ministry officials led by Pat Warner from Student Support Services, counselors from some secondary schools as well as other primary school principals and friends of the school from the business community have reached out to offer support. Abijah and his family had just left his school's graduation ceremony celebrating his allocation to Queen's College when the accident happened. The car, driven by his mother, collided with a lamppost outside the entrance to the villages at Coverley. His sister was also injured and had to be taken to hospital where she is now recovering from surgery. Lisa Broom, CBC News. And we'll have more news in just a moment. More great cities just got closer. The Scotiabank Aero Platinum Mastercard is now even better. Fly to New York, Miami, Orlando, and Fort Lauderdale with just 20,000 Scotia points. With your new Scotiabank Aero Platinum Mastercard, you'll receive a welcome bonus of 10,000 Scotia points so you can enjoy the cities you love most sooner than ever. Apply today. Call 426 7000 or visit your nearest branch. Scotiabank, discover what's possible. Don't miss this fantastic offer. For a limited time, get 25% off select wines at the Platinum Wine Store in the People's Market Complex, Tudor Bridge. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Charles Chocolates for real chocolate lovers. Stop smiling. to see powered by Barbados yellow pages and proudly sponsored by 98.1 the one Attorney General and Home Affairs Minister Adriel Brathwaite is not convinced a gun amnesty will help curb violent crime in Barbados or get illegal firearms off the streets. The AG was responding to questions from the media at the Barbados Hilton following a major meeting of the Caribbean Basin Security Initiative hosted by the United States Embassy and the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency. Noting the increasing number of reports here and across the region about the use of firearms to commit crimes, Mr. Brathwaite explained why a gun amnesty could not be the answer. If, if the chance, my friend Emmanuel brings in a firearm and it's being used um, in a murder, uh, do we say to him, well, fine, here's your $500, but we're not going to question your connection with how long have you had this, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, my information is, is that gun amnesties, frankly, do not work. And, so, and, what, and what, usually, what usually happens is that you you arrest a, a chap with his firearm and he tells you well, I was on my way to district A to deposit it um, you know etc etc et so it's, right. it's not as simple as that um, we not that notwithstanding um, if in fact um, individuals who have illegal firearms would like to turn them in um, we will welcome them off the streets and the Home Affairs Minister, however, wants closer attention to stemming the movement of illegal firearms in Barbados and the region, especially as it relates to transportation by sea. He revealed figures show 60% of guns come into the region out of the United States, while 40% come from Latin and South America. We encourage yachts and, 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 and boats for, for pleasure. Uh, we have to look at the risks associated um, with that. We have to look at the fact that a guy can get on his, on his, on his boat or... or or, or his yacht um, 
leave Barbados, go, 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 in, go outside the territorial waters within a couple of hours and come back in? Um, how do you check for these individuals? And I am not for one um, suggesting that there's an issue. All I'm saying is, is that from a national security perspective, um, the whole issue of, of yachts and, and ships going through the region um, is a risk that we have to look at. Meanwhile, we hear new laws could be coming to address human smuggling here in Barbados. The Attorney General says it forms part of new draft legislation governing transnational organized crime. When we looked at it, um, along with our U.S. partners, there was some concern that we were not addressing the issue of, of human smuggling within our borders. Um, so we are, we are at this point in time tightening our, our legislation, um, not only to address the issue of smuggling um, through Barbados, but we have accepted that in fact that it is quite possible even in a little country like like ours for individuals to be smuggled um, within within our, within our shores um, we are also finalizing our civil asset forfeiture legislation as, as i speak another vehicle um, that we believe um, will be meaningful in our fight against transnational organized crime and, in, and indeed against crime um, generally well, the Association of Public Transport Operators intends to push its proposal to the Minister of Transport again to relocate the nursery drive terminal. Interim Chairman Morris Lee says the city terminal is below sea level and is impacted whenever there is a heavy downpour. The ideal location for the new van stand, according to Mr. Lee, is located nearby and is on a higher level. I have suggested and I intend to write the minister to let him know that I believe a better approach was one that I proposed a while back, where the, the, the old um, Fisher Street Market that has been demolished should be the site of the new terminal, which is above, a, it's on a much higher gradient. And I believe that every effort must be made if you're going to use resources that are so precious in these trying times. I believe that that money should be spent wisely. Parents of graduating primary school students have been reminded to pay even closer attention to their children when they enter secondary schools. The message from Education Officer Christine Morris, who delivered the feature address at the graduation ceremony of the Jones Private School. Ms. Morris says the children will drift away if they do not have the necessary guidance. The period of secondary education is not the time for letting them run free. That is the time when you need to get even closer with them and to them because there are going to be so many distractions out there. And if you don't keep a close eye and a close arm to pull them back when you see them going in the wrong direction, then there's a possibility that you might lose them. There's a call for more support for people in Barbados with cognitive disabilities. It comes from clinical neuropsychologist Dr. Tony Nichols, who was speaking at the annual general meeting of the Barbados Council for the Disabled. She would like more employers to be comfortable hiring people with disabilities because it can be beneficial. It does wonders for the person's self-esteem. Um, you get to be a contributing member of society, um, productivity of Barbados. I mean, you're a contributing member of society, contributing to the, to the economy. And family, family situations are, can be greatly improved with, with advocacy and support. So basically, all is not lost. I think, you know, a lot, like I said, a lot of work has to be done. But I think the appetite is here. It's just it's going to take a little bit more time and effort um, to create an, an atmosphere of awareness for people who have had cognitive disabilities. And still to come, look at some of the stories making headlines across our region.